Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're checking out the Bunny Man Brewing Company's Experimental New England IPA. So Bunny Man Brewing, brand new out of uh, Fairfax, Virginia. Very, very local to my parents uh, yeah. who live literally... I, pff, maybe a hops, mile. Yeah, hop, skip, and a jump, maybe a mile. Not even a mile. Um, so if I still lived over there, I would be here every day. Uh, <laughs> so we've been hearing about these guys for a, a little while now, uh, since 2019 they were founded. Um, and they've been posting stuff on their social media about the tap room, how that's yeah. coming along, the tanks that have come in and all that stuff. So uh, very excited to see what these guys are putting out these days. We went there once before, maybe late last year. And it was so yeah. busy that we couldn't, we were just like, bah, whatever, we'll come back. I think um, it was like a month after they opened, maybe like a few weeks after they opened. Yeah. And it was just slammed. <laughs> so busy. So that's cool. Let's read this can real quick and see what we're getting into. Uh, a miracle that they're already canning. That's crazy. Yeah. Like they got it together. Like most breweries, some breweries in this area haven't, didn't even start canning until really the pandemic started and they were like, they saw the need that people are like taking away and deliveries and all that started becoming a big thing. Um, so awesome job that you guys are doing this already. This is what we like to see here, at least on this on this channel. This is what we do. <laughs> we do the cans. Bunny Man Brewing, 2019 Fairfax, Virginia. Bunny Man Experimental Ale. Description: Sabra, Citra, and Mosaic style New England IPA. Alcohol six and a half. Uh, packaged and brewed by Bunny Man Brewing Company, New Guinea. Or, I'm sorry, Guinea Road, Fairfax, Virginia. Bunny Man at Bunny Man social media stuff junk. Uh, and a date of 1-11-22, so sweet. Oh yeah. So they do have several um, labels. When I was there, they did, um, they had some really cool kind of comic book style art on their labels on some of their beers. I think it was uh, oh. a brown ale. Oh, so like hired a graphic designer to actually do it and I stuff. don't know if he's a graphic designer, but he does like comic books similar to what KCBC does. Okay, yeah, that's On cool. their labels, it's kind of the same thing. Um, but this is, I guess, just like their standard, their standard label. Yeah, maybe this... the rotating series, I'm not sure. Yeah, or maybe it's just like a stand-in so that they, they're working on something, but right. they don't have anything yet, or maybe, I don't know. So definitely some sedimentary action going on in there, a little bit of bits of hops and chunks of yeast oh, yeah. and things like that in my glass anyways. I don't have any in my glass. Huh. Well, I must be the uh, lucky one then. Yeah. <laughs> it pours a nice, like, hazy, golden... Opaqueness. Mm -hmm yellow orange color yeah that's that look that's looking pretty nice that lacing is looking pretty good to me i mean that's hanging out definitely looks like a hazy new england style ipa yep yep that's reminiscent actually of um it looks like the trash panda that we did a while ago uh, from uh parallel 49. that's right the that Canadian was like beer. way back in the day and they had little sedimentary uh things going on there too uh, not very filtered uh, ale, but that one tasted amazing, so you never know. Let's take a nose. Yep, there's definitely um, pineapple happening in there. God, there's so many like se like sediments in mine. There's sweetness. Do you, does yours have all that stuff in there? No, lots of sweetness. Lots of sweetness. Um, some stone fruit. Yeah, I'm. it smells like ever so slightly oaty, like flaked oats. Um, I'm, I'm gonna guess that, yeah, you're right. This is gonna be some kind of like soft mouthfeel, kind mm. of kind of uh, hazy bomb with a lot of uh, sweet, uh, fruity complexity to it, so. A little bit more sweetness. Yeah, it's I sweet. Yeah, it's, it is kind of sweet. It smelled exactly the way it tastes. Yeah, you're not, uh, you're not getting a super, super complex thing going on there, just because it is what it claims to be on the nose anyway. 
you know? There's yeah. not, it's not going to like punch you in the face and be like, whoa, I didn't see that one coming. But I mean, it's accurate to what it smells like. The aroma definitely transfers to the taste. This is good. It I is mean, good. This is on the sweeter side of the, you know, New England style IPAs, but it's really nice. Yeah, it's a little sweet for me. Um, the bitterness is kind of, it's there, but again, this is, it's more of like a mouth bitterness rather than a back of the throat bitterness. Mm -hmm. um, and that, yeah, that lingering sweetness sticks around for sure. I'm getting this like really heavy sort of mango um, stone fruit thing. Yeah, for like, sure. Really, and it's dense too. It's mm -hmm. almost, I almost want to say this is like close to the density of like Vale beers. I was going to say it's, it's similar to the Aslan. Okay, beers. yeah, that makes sense. And it makes sense because their brewer came from Aslan. Yeah, I mean, so. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Although I have to say I find this slightly cleaner than some of those Aslan IPAs we've had. Yeah, Aslan beers are kind of dirty on the dirtier side. Except for the sediment in my glass. I mean, maybe you guys could filter that out a little bit more in secondary. That would be a cool thing to see happen there. Um, now, if you're drinking it straight out of the can, it doesn't really matter and you'll never know. But You'll never taste it. If you're doing it proper, like we do it here yeah. on this channel, then yeah, you're gonna notice, notice that it. stuff. I have a like a little bit a is tolerance okay. to it, yeah. like if it's slight, but I have had some beers where I could not drink it because it was the entire glass. It was just, the whole thing. I mean, it looked like cottage cheese. <laughs> I was like, no, no, I can't drink this. This is an acceptable amount, but like I could do, I, I, it would be fine if it was a little less, you know, that's all I'm saying. And um, I do have to say, I, I love the, the graphics. You know, it seems like they're kind of like well put together for such a young brewery. Yeah. Uh, the graphics are, are quite nice. This like, you know, Bunny Man event. I mean, do you do you really know the myth behind yes, Bunny Man? I in fact do. Story time. There's actually two or more different myths surrounding the bunny man. One is that he was like a, like a, an, a young Air Force, um, ex-Air Force pilot or something like that. And he, uh, th so there was, he took his like lady friend to this, um, this point, this, this place. Uh, and something about, I don't know the specifics because it it's been a long time since I've heard this rendition, but like uh, something happened and um, some guy popped out of the woods and like started throwing axes at the car or something like that when they were like making out some jazz like that. Um, so that's okay. one rendition and that was like the bunny man or whatever. Another rendition is that, uh, there was a guy that escaped from a mental institution at some point yeah. and he would skin bunnies alive and then wear them on his head. <laughs> <laughs> and throw hatchets at children when they came by. And then he would kill the children and hang them in trees. That's the version I heard. Which is fucked up. <laughs> That's, That's the version I heard. Like the thing about the bunny man uh, history is that nobody's actually really sure if this, if any of this is true, if any of this really actually happened. Right. There was, there is a hatchet that exists in some museum in Virginia. I can't remember where, I think it's like the, um, Fairfax Station Museum or something. I'm not even sure. There's got to be one, right? Yeah. I mean, um, but somewhere there's a, a newspaper article right. and a hatchet. And you can Google this. This is like actually real. Um, but it, the hatchet to me looks too real and modern to be from like the period of time, like the 50s or 40s or whatever it was, where yeah. the Bunny Man came. So I don't know. Um, I do know that go either way. That there are, uh, I think, like yeah, like a few news articles that. Um, Oh, and it all centers around this bridge, this right. Bunny Man Bridge in Virginia. Google that. It's like one of the top most haunted places in America. Right. And like every Halloween, the cops have to close this bridge down because of foot traffic to the, the people want to see the Bunny Man. Yeah. And the story goes, if you, if you go to the bridge and you say Bunny Man, Bunny Man, Bunny Man, then the uh, Bunny Man will pop out and kill you. So yeah, why go to the bridge and say Bunny Man three times? Yeah, I don't if know. You, do you want to <laughs> die? Because we, we grew up in Springfield, which is not too far away from Fairfax Station, actually, just like right across the, it's like next door. Um, so yeah, we've heard this, these stories all of our lives. I've never seen a bunny man. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, it's, after reading some of the news articles from like the 40s and the 50s, I'm like, yeah, okay, two, there were two instances where somebody saw something, but then it kind of just cut cut off completely and nobody was able to solve it. So. This isn't like a Sasquatch where every once in a while you'll hear a Sasquatch story. 
it's not like no, that. Like just this, stopped. this never happens anymore. So I don't know. Yeah. But it's really cool branding. You're right. Like they've got it together. Um, I like how they're so close to the bridge, physically, uh, right. in proximity to it, and their whole mantra is their whole theme is this like bunny man. I think that's dope. I mean, yeah. that's a cool, unique, you know, branding to have. I and think it's, it's cool. It's a cool looking bunny man. Like he looks kind of. He looks, he looks like he drinks beer. Yeah, he looks kind of cool and like mysterious, but not like evil necessarily. He doesn't look like a villain. Yeah, it kind of looks like um, just a, a hooded teenager almost, like a young Eminem with his hood on, and then he's just got bunny Bunnies, ears. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really, uh, I dig this beer. A little bit on the sweet side for me, and a little bit uh, of the sedimentary action happening there, which, I don't know, I'm not a huge fan. But as far as the flavor and how it presents itself, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty darn good job. I think. Yeah. yeah. Alright guys, well that does it from us. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you liked what you saw, please hit that like and subscribe button so you can catch new videos when they come out. Until next time, stay crafty. Cheers. Mm -hmm.